Hello everyone, welcome to another video on CompTIA A plus exam question series. This is video 5 use in this series, so let's get started. So the question 1 in today video is that the frequency bands used by 802.11 network include, we have to select two answers and the options are 5.0 GHz, 5.4 GHz, 2.0 GHz and 2.4 GHz. And the correct answers are 5.0 GHz and 2.4 GHz. These are the frequency bands that are usually associated with the wireless access point or the Wi-Fi that we use in our homes. The next question is which of the following answers refer to the characteristics of Bluetooth? We have to select three answers. The options are 2.4 GHz frequency range, long range wireless technology, used for connecting devices in a wireless personal area network 5.0 gigahertz frequency range used for connecting devices in a wireless lane or the short range wireless technology so the correct option related to the bluetooth technology or the bluetooth characteristics are that it has the uh, frequency range of 2.4 gig, gigahertz and it is used for connecting devices in a wireless PAN. PAN stands for personal area network and the uh, last option is that it is used for short range wireless technology. So the PAN and the short range wireless technology these, these are related. PAN means personal area network and it is used for a very short range within a room typically. Question number three is that what are the characteristics features of the IEEE 802.11a wireless standards? We have to select two answers and the options are 2.4 gigahertz frequency band, maximum data signaling rate of 54 megabit per second, 5.0 gigahertz frequency band, maximum data signaling rate of up to 600 megabit per second 5.4 gigahertz frequency band and the maximum data signaling rate of 11 megabit per second and the correct answers are maximum data signaling rate of 54 megabit per second the 5.0 gigahertz frequency band So these were the correct uh, options. The fourth question is that which of the following, which of the answers listed below refer to the IEEE 802.11b wireless standard and we have to select two answers and the options are maximum data signaling rate of 11 megabit per second, 2.0 gigahertz frequency range, maximum data signaling rate of 54 megabit per second. 5.0 gigahertz frequency range maximum data signaling rate of 600 megabit per second and 2.4 gigahertz frequency range and the correct answers are maximum data signaling rate of 11 megabit per second and the frequency range of 2.4 gigahertz Question number 5 is that which of the following answer refers to the IEEE 802.11g wireless standards and we have to select two answers and the options are again maximum data signaling rate of 600 megabit per second 5.0 gigahertz 5.4 gigahertz frequency band maximum data signaling rate of 54 megabit per second 2.4 gigahertz frequency range maximum data signaling rate of 11 megabit per second and 5.0 frequency range and the correct options are maximum data signaling rate of 54 megabit per second and the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. So the question number six is that multiple input, multiple output MIMO is a wireless technology that allows for significant increase in wireless data throughput due to use of multiple antennas and multiple data streams. 
so the options are either this statement is true or it is false and the correct option is true so mimo multiple input and multiple output is a wireless technology that allows for increase in data throughput or we can also say data rate and this is because it uses multiple antennas and multiple data stream and this technology is uh, typically used in the latest Wi-Fi standard that is Wi-Fi 6 that we will study in the coming slides. So the question number 7 is that what are the characteristics of IEEE 802.11 AX also known as Wi-Fi 6 wireless standard and we have to select all the options that are correct. Option 1 is that maximum data signaling rate of 3.39 gigabit per second. Option 2 is 5.0 gigabit gigahertz frequency band. Option 3 is multi user multiple input multiple out MU MIMO. Option 3 is maximum data signaling rate of 6.933 gigabit per second. Next option is that 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. Next option is that maximum data signaling rate of 9.60 gigabit per second. And the last option is multiple input, multiple output. And the correct answers are that it uses the 5.0 gigahertz frequency band. And it is multiple user in multiple input and multiple out MU, MIMO. And the next correct option is that it also uses 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. So the last correct option is that the maximum data signaling rate of up to 9.607 gigabit per second. So it is a significant increase from the old Wi-Fi standards, which were in uh, which throughput were uh, in. Uh, megabit per second while this uh, wi-fi 6 it has uh, increased the data rate to gigabit per second up to 9.60 gigabit per second which is a significant increase so the question number eight is that the characteristic features of the IEEE 802.11 n wireless standard include we have to select all the correct options option one is multiple input multiple output option 2 is maximum data signaling rate of 54 megabit per second option 3 is 2.4 gigahertz frequency band option 5 is multiple user multiple input multiple output mu memo option number 5 is 5.0 gigahertz frequency band and the last option is maximum data signaling rate of up to 600 megabit per second and the correct answers are that it is MIMO multiple input and multiple output it uses the frequency band of 2.4 gigahertz frequency and it also uses 5.0 gigahertz frequency band so we have seen this in our latest Wi-Fi routers that we can select either 2.4 uh, gigahertz frequency band or 5.0 gigahertz frequency band, or we can select the auto so that uh, the wireless uh, router will decide for itself that whether it uses this uh, band or this band. And the last correct option is that the uh, data rate is up to 600 megabit per second. So the IEEE 802.n is one of the latest standard uh, also known as uh, the uh, also known as the Wi-Fi uh, 5 Wi-Fi 5 standard before the Wi-Fi 6 which has a data rate of up to 600 megabit per second so the question number nine is that which of the following antenna types would be least suitable for long range point to point bridging links so we which are uh, the following antennas are least suitable for long range point to point and the options are yagi antenna omnidirectional antenna dish antenna unidirectional antenna and parabolic antenna and the correct answers are omnidirectional antenna the correct answer 
in the previous question was the omnidirectional antenna. So the omnidirectional antenna means that uh, if I can make an antenna that it transmits the waves in all direction. Omni means all direction wise each uh, in point to point in point to point communication we need directional communication. So the omnidirectional antenna is least suitable for this type of communication. Question number 10 is that which of the following answer refer to directional antenna type suitable for long range point to point bridging links and we have to select three options and the options are yagi antenna, omnidirectional antenna, dish antenna, non-directional antenna, parabolic antenna and dipole antenna. So the correct answers are yagi antenna, dish antenna and the parabolic antenna. So these antennas are used for point to point communication or long range point to point communication. Question number 11 is that which of the, which of the answer listed below refers to examples of an unlicensed wireless technology band. Options are 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz or all of the above. And the correct answer is all of the above. These all bands are unlicensed bands. You, have, you must have known that 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, these are used by everyone at their home in their uh, Wi-Fi using wireless access point or AP. So these are unlicensed and anyone can use it anywhere inside their homes for private purposes. So the question number 12 is that which wireless technology enable identification and tracking of tags attached to objects and the op uh, options are WTLS, GPS, RFID or NFC and the correct option is RFID. So RFID a radio frequency ID is used for identification and tracking, uh, tracking tags. Question number 13 is that a type of identification badge that can be held within a certain distance of a reader to authenticate the badge holder is called, the options are ID badge, smart card, security token and RFID badge and if you have read the previous question you already know the answer and the answer is RFID badge. Question number 14 is that a dedicated, a dedicated file server is referred to as, so if you know the abbreviation of FTP you also know the answer FTP stands for file transfer protocol server. So this is used for file transfer and it is this protocol is used in uh, file server. Question number 15 is which of the following server types is used for automatic allocation of IP addresses on a network. The options are DNS server, DHCP server, FTP server and HTTP server and the correct answer is DHCP server it is used for automatic allocation of IP addresses. DNS server is used for translation of uh, domain names into IP addresses. FTP uh, server file transfer server is used for file transfer while HTTP server is used for browsing web pages that we uh, use in our web browser. Question number 16 is that IPP, LDP slash LPR and SMB slash SIFS are example of protocol that enable what kind of network service? And the options are name resolution, printing, email handling and IP address allocation. And the correct answer is printing. Question number 17 is which type of server is used for collecting diagnostic and monitoring data from network devices? Options are proxy server, UC server, syslog server and ICS server and the correct answer is syslog server. Syslog server is used to collect logs from different network devices or servers. Question number 18 is what is the function of an SMTP server? So SMTP stands for simple mail transfer protocol and the options are authentication, file storage and sharing, name resolution and email handling and if you know the abbreviation the answer is very easy and clear and the answer is email handling. Question number 19 is 
what is the function of an HTTP server. And this uh, already, we already studied in uh, a previous slide. The options are file storage, serving web pages, name resolution, and email handling. And the correct option answer is serving web pages. The question number 20 is what part of the AAA security architecture deals with verification of identity of a person or process? Options are authentication, authorization, and accounting. And the correct answer is authentication. So authentication is used for verification of a person or a process. When you, uh, when you input a username and a password, this process is called authentication that we uh, do almost on the daily basis inside our emails, our laptops and on the internet. Which of the answers listed below refers to the process of granting or, of granting or denying access to resources? The options are authentication, authorization and accounting and the correct option is authorization. So once you are authenticated, you log into a certain web page or a certain device, then you are granted certain uh, access to certain resources. And this process is known as authorization, that you are authorized to use this resource while you are unauthorized to use that resource. So this process is known as authorization in AAA security architecture. The first one is authentication and then the next one is authorization. Question number 22 is that in the AAA security architecture, the process of tracking access services as well as the amount of consumed resources is called authentication, authorization and accounting. And you have guessed the answer. The answer is accounting. So once you authenticate to a certain resource, you are authorized to certain resources. Then when use that, uh, you use that resources, you are being tracked, your services being tracked, how, uh, how much services you consume, which type of services you use, which type of services you access. These all are logged and you are accounted for and this process is called accounting. So that's all for today. I hope you have learned something uh, from this video. I will upload the next video in the series soon, so please uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed till yet and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you.